Hi guys, welcome to some level three chemistry. Today we are going to look at the um, 3.6 standards um, focusing on buffer solution today. So buffer solution is actually, um, I'll, I'll say the turning point of aqueous because if you've been kind of getting everything so far, um, I think buffer is where a lot of people just fall off because it's quite difficult. Um, but hopefully after this particular video you should be feeling pretty confident because it's actually not that difficult um, after all um, and it is absolutely essential um, that if you're someone that wanting to do well in aqueous you need to be able to if you haven't seen my previous videos you must be able to do well in the weak acid and based uh, weak acid and base calculation yeah, you know, you need to know how to use those equations. Um, you don't need to know how they derive from, but you do need to know how to use them. So today we are going to look at buffer um, because combining these lots together, um, the excellence question is going to come from your titration curve question, which we will going to look at in the next video. OK, because that's where the the most difficult part of this entire unit is, because that's everything um, just combined together okay so buffer solution buffer solution is actually a really really cool idea um, a buffer solution is a mixture oops why do I have that on highlight this is a, a buffer solution is a mixture of weak acid or base and its conjugate acid slash base depending on which one you started with. okay so like say for example if I have NH3 my conjugate acid is going to be NH4 plus if I have CH3COOH my conjugate base is going to be CH3COO minus so how does a buffer solution work a buffer solution because it partially dissociate the bulk like say if I simply mix if I get some ethanoic acid and I get some ethanoid ion, I just, I just mix them together. The bulk of the solution are still going to be the weak acid and the conjugate base. Okay, so they are just going to be sitting there in the solution. But what this buffer solution is really good at, like say for example, if we use this CH3COH minus, um, you know, this buffer, what does it do is that it will resist pH change. Okay you will resist pH change. It doesn't mean, now this is something that people get confused, it doesn't mean that if you add an acid or base into a buffer, it doesn't change its pH, it just doesn't change it too drastically. Like for example, okay, so for example, if we look at this as a buffer, this is our buffer, if I add, let's say HCl into the solution. Now the HCl, is going to be you know this is a strong acid so what's going to happen when this hcl is being added into the ch3coh and ch3coo minus mixture what's going to happen is that the ch3co minus is going to be like oh my god this new strong acid just came in i'm going to neutralize you so what that does is that it com completely neutralizes the hcl so what it does is gives the H to the COH, uh, goes CO minus, and then form the CL minus ions. Now the CL minus ions suspected ion doesn't even do anything afterwards. And then you created a, a weak acid, which is a conjugate acid of CH3CO minus. And then the CH3COO minus, uh, so sorry, the CH3COH will then partially dissociate in water. And then you make a little bit of your CH3CO minus back and you make a tiny percent of H3O plus. So I, I like using numbers to just to quantify this so people have an idea, okay? Like say for example, if I added 100 molecules of HCl into the solution, so I'm gonna use 100 of my CH3CO minus to neutralize the 100 of the HCl that got added in because it's one to one. It takes one of my guy to neutralize one of you guys. Okay, so this is gone. And this is gone. And what did I make? I made a hundred of these, and I made a hundred of these. I don't care about the chloride because it's suspected. Now, with the new hundred of CH3COH that I made, only one of it is going to turn into the CH3CO minus, and you're only going to make one of the H3O plus. And then at the end, you have 99 of your CH3COH, which is sitting in the solution doing absolutely nothing. Okay, so what did we, why did I quantify this? You know, if you think about HCl, if we go 
you know, let's go back to our strong acid section. If you have, if you have your strong HCl, this is going to completely dissociate into H3O plus and Cl minus. So this is where why this is why I quantify it. because if you added 100 100 HCl is equivalent to 100 H3O pluses because it completely dissociate. So you don't have any of these anymore. So you would get normally normally you get a hundred of the H3O plus molecules being added into the solution. But as you as you can see in the buffer solution, the weak acid neutralizes a strong base, uh, the weak base, sorry, the weak base neutralizes a strong acid to produce a conjugate weak acid. And then this conjugate weak acid further dissociate and you only produce a tiny percentage of the H3O plus in comparison. So as a result, the pH will only go down in this case, because you're adding an acid, the base will, uh, so the pH will only go down by a little bit. It doesn't mean it won't change completely. So I'll just, um, so it won't resist pH change. So it doesn't just instantly go up or it doesn't instantly go down. Like a really good example is um, yeah, those of you that, that do biology, I understand one of the topics you have to do is homeostasis, you know, just control of the internal system. One of the major, major um, component in the human body is the, is the blood. And the blood has to have a certain pH. And if that pH, um, if that level of the pH has changed drastically, you're either really sick or you already did. So, you know, you, how do we, and then we constantly eat, we constantly drink, and we intake a lot of um, acidic or sometimes alkaline stuff, and you don't want your blood just to change the pH after you take a sip of, um, you know, a can of Coca-Cola, because that has a pH around four, all right? You don't want to drink, a, you know, have a drink of um, Coke, and then boom, you drop dead because your, your, your pH has dropped down, and then you, you know, you're falling sick, and the body can't control itself, and you die. It's not going to happen like that because we have buffer solutions. All right. So the buffer solutions, this is incredibly important in industries and everything else because you don't want to, because accidents happen, mistakes happen. You accident, like you guys have done titration before, you know what happens when you add an extra drop or two here and there. You're like, oh my God, it went too pink. I wish I didn't do that. Well, this is what buffer solution is here for. A buffer solution will allow you to make some mistakes it will not change the pH drastically because you have a mixture of the weak acid and the weak base, which will neutralize whatever you add into the solution until one of them run out. Okay, so I'll go through the other example. So if I add, um, let's say sodium hydroxide, this time I'm adding a strong base into the solution and it's gonna do the opposite. So this is a strong base. <coughs> Excuse me. So my weak acid is gonna um, come in. My CH3COH is gonna be like, hey, it's my turn out. This guy's a really, really strong base. I'll, I'll take it out. So it's gonna neutralize it completely, and it's gonna make CH3COO minus plus Na plus plus some water. <coughs> Excuse me. So, and as you can see, the CH3COO minus is gonna further partially dissociate into the conjugate acid um, COOH and you will make some OH minus. So it's, this is exactly the same example as I was talking about before. You added a strong base into it, but only a tiny percentage of that will eventually result in some OH minus ions, which doesn't increase the pH too much. Okay, so that is the point of a buffer solution. And a buffer solution works, really, like I mentioned before, it is absolutely essential in laboratories. Um, if you want to do some biology later on, it, it's so incredibly important because it allows the solution to be robust to some sudden acidic or basic um, or alkaline additions and um, the pH will remain quite constant. Okay, it will change, but not drastically. Now. Hopefully that makes sense. Now we're gonna do look at some calculations. All right, so this is gonna be some buffer pH calculations. Now this is going to be very important. Now I'll, again, I will show you how to derive the equation, but as always, you don't need to show how the equation, where the equation came, uh, came about. You just need to know how to answer the question. Okay, so for example, um, for example, if I have, let's use the easy one, let's say if I have NH3 slash NH4 plus equations, okay, uh, NH4 plus, so this is my buffer, 
all right, my buffer. And then people always go, how do you know this is a buffer? Because remember, the buffer is made of the acid and its conjugate base, or the base and its conjugate acid. So there should only be one H plus difference, okay? So let's just look at this equation. Uh, let's just look at this reaction. Let's look at the base, um, the acidic one. If I want to turn the acid into the base, this is just writing down the dissociation process because I just want to show you how this works. I mean, you should be able to do that quite confidently just to show an H4 plus is a strong, uh, sorry, it's a weak acid. Now, how do you write the K expression? K expression is going to be equal to the NH3 concentration multiplied by the H3O plus concentration divided by the NH4 plus concentration. Okay, so that shouldn't be too hard. It's just writing Ka. Ka is the products divided by the reactants. Now, what we can do, we can manipulate these a little bit. All right. Now, we can't make any more assumptions because remember, what is a buffer? A buffer contains a certain amount of these and a certain amount of these. Now, how much? We don't really know because it de depends on what particular buffer you're trying to make. So the concentration of these can differ so we have to manipulate them because i want to show you what the ph is dependent on in a buffer solution let's rearrange let's rearrange this equation let's rearrange so we put h3 or plus on the left hand side and that means this goes on to this side so ka times nh4 plus divided by nh3 Okay, so if you're not so good with math, I'm not going to rearrange the equation for you. Just, just if, if you can't solve it mathematically on your own, just memorize the final equation because I don't want to waste time here. Okay, so if you look at this here, the NH4+, plus, this is the acid, the NH3 is the base. So this, I'm going to do this in a different color. So H3O+, plus, so this is the equation you want to memorize. H3O plus equals a Ka, uh, H3O plus equals a Ka of the weak acid, which will be given using the acid divide the acid concentration divided by the base concentration. And you may go, what is the acid? What is the base? These two things are the two species which make up your buffer. Okay. Now mathematically, that this one is going to work 100% of the time, but there is even a better one. It's a little bit easier to remember. I'm going to negative log the left hand side and I'm going to negative log the right hand side because if I do the same thing to both sides of the equation, I'm not doing anything different. I'm just, you know, manipulating the equation. So what if I negative log H3O plus? That will be pH, wouldn't it? What if I negative log Ka? That will be pKa, wouldn't it? If I negative log this, that will be plus log the opposite, which is base divided by acid okay so either equation will work really well now the person my personally uh, um, you know I'm going this I'm going through the steps just to show you I obviously like the second one better because there's less calculation okay because normally we give you the ka and you just literally do the concentration of base divided by the acid log it plus pka and that's your answer like because I'm a firm believer if there's less calculation you need to do there is um, um, there's less calculation you need to do, the less chance of you making mistakes. Okay, so that's how you calculate pH. Now let's put that into practice. Let's have a look at some of the questions. All right. Now there are two types of um, two types of um, what I call buffer. Um, the, the two processes of making buffer. So I'm actually keen to make another video just to go through that because I don't want to make this one too long um, because that one will tie up with titration curve really well. And if you can um, use that method, you can do any titration curve question. If, um, you can do any buffer calculation because it just works like a charm. Okay, but it's um, we're just going to introduce it today. So not don't want to make it too much of a hassle for you today. But let's have a look at this. 5.11 grams of sodium ethanol eight was added to 125 mils, blah, 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 to make a buffer solution. So this is one particular method. Can you see that this is HCOONA? And I want you to just to start ignoring the NAs because, you know, first of all, we don't want another tubes. And also the NAs are spectate ions. So this breaks down to HCOO minus and Na plus. So we just want this. All right, the Na plus are 
negligible. We don't want them. They are spectator eyes. So we're adding the stuff into the stuff. So hopefully you can see that this and thus these two things are conjugate as of the base appears. So obviously they'll make a buffer solution. Okay. So you know that's the first thing you need to be able to identify. So this is the number one way. Might as well do it now. This is the number one way of making a buffer. Grab a weak acid. Grab a concent. Uh, grab a, uh, the conjugate base. Mix them together. Then you have a buffer. And then you can actually calculate the pH of the buffer. Or sometimes you can even go backwards and you go. All right. I want a buffer that um, that has a pH of like say four. And then you can work out work backwards to figure out how many volumes like how many mils of each that you need to actually create this buffer okay but this is just a more straightforward question um now first thing first you can see they gave you the pka and they gave you the ka that's why i like using the pka first because it's just a nice such uh, i mentioned this in the last video this is such a nice easy number to use all right Give the pH range over which resulting solution will function as a buffer now this is something i haven't covered now the pH of um, the thing that that functions is pKa plus minus one, so it's going to be between two point seven four to four point seven four. Okay, so if you, within this range, within this range, let's say for example, if I do a titration curve, I say for example, this is my initial, like say this is two, this is four. Oops, that's not good. I should do pH up here. I say this is two, this is four. This is six. This is a pH on the left hand side, and this is adding. This is adding um, sodium hydroxide, for example. As you can imagine, the more base I have added, the higher the pH is going to drop. But when you're adding the sodium hydroxide into this particular buffer, which is going to be holding strong within this buffer range, because what that means is that this particular region is going to go up really slowly. It's going to go up really slowly, going to go up really slowly until you get to the 4.74, and then it's going to crash. Why is that crash? Because you're like, I don't have any more. Remember, if I'm adding sodium hydroxide, I need the HCOOH to neutralize the sodium hydroxide. But then after 4.74, I don't have any more HCOOH left, and there's nothing to control the sodium hydroxide, and the pH just shoot right up. Okay, so it just shoots right up, and as you can see, so this is my buffer range, which is between 2.74 to 4.74, and this is this is this thing in the middle this is where your pka sits in this is your pka which is equals to the ph of these um you know the range the center point of the of the of the buffer i'm not gonna write it there okay so pka equals ph right in the middle of the buffer region but that's more to do with titration curve okay so just remember ph equals pka plus minus one that's the range you know if you want to have a buffer that you know will resist pH change around five. Then you want to, I say around five. Then you can make a buffer um, to have a to, to to have a range between four to six, or three to five, or four to um, four point five to six point five. So it, you will just make sure it stays in that five region. Okay. So show by calculation the pH of this buffer is four point five. Or I like this type of question because it gave you the answer. So you can always check if it doesn't equal to four point five, you've done something wrong. So let's go back to the question. So. You know, this is what I do first. If I go, all right, I need to calculate the pH of the buffer. So I'm going to go write down the equation straight away. I'm going to write down this equation. I'm going to show you, obviously, my preference. I'm going to use this one. pH equals pKa log concentration of base divided by the concentration of the acid. Because as you can see, I already have the pKa. The pKa is right over here, 3.74. I just need to figure out what this is and what this is. But they already gave me this. All right, so let's have a look at that. So they gave us 5.11 grams of sodium ethanol 8, which is the CH3, uh, sorry, this HCO minus. Remember, this is the base. This is the acid. All right, so people always get confused, confused which one's which. They remember the equations, they, they know what to do, but then boom, they substitute the wrong numbers and they put them other way around, and then you don't really get anything higher than achieved, which is very, very sad. So the base concentration, which is going to be the HCOO minus, 
how do we calculate this HCO minus? So what do we get first? We get given 5.11 grams. That 5.11 grams is dissolved in 125 mils. So that's going to be 5.11 divided by 125 mils, which is 0.125 liters, which is going to give us 5.11 divided by 0. 5.11 divided by 0 0.125, which is going to be um, 40. Wait, why am I dividing by that? I'm stupid. Okay, excuse me. Ignore that. I need the molar mass. I was like, why am I dividing that by that? Sorry, it's late in the evening. So you got the grams, so n equals small m divided by big M, excuse me for that, n equals small m divided by big M. Whenever you get grams, we don't like grams, we want to convert that to moles. So 5.11 divided by 68, which is going to be 0 0.0751 moles. And then we want the concentration, concentration equals n divided by v, so that's going to be 0 0.7. 551 divided by 0 0.125 liters. That's much better, which is going to give us 0 0.601 moles per liter. So this concentration is going to be 0 0.601. Now, what's the other one? Look, that's already there. The concentration of um, isonoic acid, sorry, methanoic acid, is going to be 0 0.105. So there we go. We know the base, we know the acid, so we simply substitute them in. So pH equals pKa, which is what? 3.74 plus log, uh, what's, which one's the base? 0 0.601 divided by 0 0.61, uh, 0 0.105. So make sure you do this first and then log the answer. So 7.14 plus. Um, divided by 0 0.105, then log this bad boy. That's going to be 0 0.758 plus those together is going to be 4.5. Okay, so that's how you calculate the pH of a buffer solution if you get this particular scenario. Okay, so I think for the first, because I'm going to do a follow-up video for the um, for the next time for the other type of calculation because that's um, that's far more important. This is the simplest way of making buffer. Is that again you simply mix the weak acid and the conjugate weak base mix them together and then you figure out the, the concentrations take a division and then you can find the um, then you know the pk add them together then you have the um, the ph now just be very careful because this says they assume there's no change in the volume now sometimes sometimes they may give you two solutions so you have to do dilutions. Like say, for example, instead of giving you 5.11 grams, they could give you like say, uh, 10, 100 mils of this. 100 mils of 0 0.121 mole per liter of um, HCO and A. So you have to be able to do the dilution so we can find some questions to do with that. But um, that's just, that's not too complex if you get the idea that we're going with. All right, so next one. Um, gonna do this one then I'm gonna let you go because I don't want to make this too long so you need this because PK equals that okay equals that all right so this is going to look a little bit different and this is this might look a little bit scary people get thrown off by this type of question which I like I like this type of question okay and because that will make my point um, which is the concept I'm gonna quickly go through after this question so we got dilute hydrochloric acid added to NH3 until the ratio of NH3 to NH4 plus is 5 to 1. So this will introduce you into the next idea, which is the second way of making a buffer solution. The first way, now just does not answer the question, the first way is just adding the weak acid plus the conjugate base, mix them together, and then you have a buffer. Okay? I say, for example, I mix NH4 plus with NH3. I mix CH3COOH with CH3CO minus, then you will produce buffers. Okay, very easy. But the other way is by doing this. The other way is that if I have NH3, for example, which is a weak base, if I add a strong acid, What's going to happen is that this will neutralize um, 
only add a small amount, like a small amount, this is important. If you add a small amount of HCL, I'm going to use some of my NH3 to completely wipe it out. And what do I produce? This is an acid, it would pass on the, pro, uh, the proton, the, NH, uh, the H plus to the, to the NH4, uh, sorry, to the NH3. Um, and then you can see you would have this. And look at that, and look at that. So these two, you started with a lot of NH3s, then you add a small amount of the strong acid, which neutralized some of the NH3, and you produced some of the NH4 plus, and therefore, you have got a buffer. Okay, so this is the other way. And as you can see, this involves a neutralization reaction, which is why we have to learn this for the titration curve. Okay, so you probably got sick of me here and saying titration curve, um, because trust me, once you get there, you will understand how big of a deal it is, because that's where everything gets added together. All right, so that's that part. Um, I'm gonna delete this whole thing, because that's, that's not really answering the question. Um, so let's go back here. So what are we calculating? So we know, remember, when they sort of determine the pH of the solution, evaluate the ability. So again, pH equals pKa plus log the concentration of the base divided by the concentration acid. So whenever you see the equation like, whenever you see buffer calculation, just chuck that down straight away. All right, now we have here solution until the ratio of NH3 to NH4 plus is 5 to 1. So that means NH3 divided by NH4 is going to equal to 5. NH3 is the base, NH4 plus is the acid. So can you already see this is base divided by acid which equals 5. So I don't need to know this concentration. I already know the answer. I already know B, but the base divided by the acid is equal to 5, so it's log 5. Okay, and then pKa, oh, why am I even writing pKa? Because I don't know what it does. pKa is 9.24. So 9.24, drop my calculator, 9.24, so log 5 is um, 0 0.6, so it's 9.24 plus. 0 0.699 plus 9.24 and that's going to give me 9.94 and that's it there you go you calculate the ph just like that you don't even need to calculate um what do you call it you don't even need to calculate any of the um any any of the um, um the, the concentration because you already know what the answer is okay so that again brings me to the next point the buffer solution, the buffer solution, like how good it is as a buffer, it depends on the ratio of the concentration of base divided by the concentration acid. Or if you're using the first equation that I use, which is you know H3O plus um, and you know Ka times blah, 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 that, that first equation. It, you don't need to use this one. It's just the ratio of the concentration of base and acid. So it doesn't have to be divided because it depends on which equation you use. Because if you use the other one, it's, more, um, it's A on top, then this one B is on top. Okay, this, so the buffer solution, it depends the strength of the buffer, the pH of the buffer, the um, ability of the buffer to function depends on the ratio of the concentration of the base and the concentration of the acid. Okay, so there you go. So the solution will act act as a buffer, and um, this is the pKa is nine point two four, and this pH is nine point nine four. So we want to evaluate its ability to resist a pH change in small amount of strong acid or base um, that is being used. So for example, now this is where you need to understand a little bit. You know how the ratio of NH3, they told you this in the question, NH3 divided by NH4 plus is going to be a ratio of 5 to 1. So that means we would have the concentration of NH3 is going to be 5 times more than the concentration of ammonium. Okay, so that means obviously I have more 
base than the acid. So that means this buffer, this buffer will do better, will be more effective neutralizing a strong acid. Neutralizing a strong acid. Okay, because I have more base sitting in here, they can just come in and neutralize any of the strong acid that you know we could add into the solution. And there's more of it, and they can simply wipe it out. Okay, so this is where you can just, that's one way of looking at it, or you can just remember, if your pH is bigger than pKa, you know, this P, where's the pH from? This is the pH of buffer. If the pH of the buffer is stronger than the pKa of the weak acid in the buffer, then this is better that means there's more there's more base than acid in the buffer if your ph is lower than pka there's more acid than the buffer uh, sorry than the buffer than the base and if the ph equals pka now how do you get ph equals pka that means the concentration of the acid equals the concentration of the base and if you don't trust me, you can try this. What if I told you, all right, the NH3 and NH4 concentration is one to one, they're equal. And you go pH equals pKa log plus log um, base over acid. And then you're gonna go, all right, what's, I already know these two numbers are the same. So it's pKa plus log one, because the same number divided by itself is one. And if you do it on your calculator, log one is zero. So pH equals pKa. Okay, so this is um, again pretty long for a introduction to buffer, but um, it is very very important concept as you can see, and we're not even done with it. Um, so I don't want to make it just too long because we can easily make another half an hour just by going through some other questions that's more relatable to the titration curve. But this is the introduction, so make sure that you memorize the equations, make sure that you know what the heck is going on when we're doing talking about talking about a buffer. Um, so, because if you can't, if you don't understand buffer, then this is what I meant. If you, if I lose you here, and I will definitely lose you before titration curve because you know it's part of it. Okay, so hope everything's okay, and um, and like and subscribe if you haven't done so, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.